Hey everyone, Matty here from DCLblogger.com. Um, this is going to be a kind of preliminary video explaining what an NFT is. Um, NFTs is basically what this whole blog is about, trading NFTs. And it's a, it's a, a term given to a token standard that represents um, these cards or um, axes or lands. And I'm going to go through this in this whole video to basically explain to you what an NFT is. Okay. An NFT, um, to understand it, I think the best thing to do is start with um, what the word fungibility means. Um, NFT stands for non-fungible token, right? Um, two separate characteristics, non-fungible and fungibility. Um, let's kind of go through what fungibility actually is in itself. So fungibility is the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with other individual goods or assets of the same type. Fungible assets simplify the exchange and trade processes as fungibility implies equal value between the assets. So fungibility, fungibility is basically the ability to trade items of similar value with each other. This, the item like oil, um, wheat are physical representations of fungible assets or items. Um, in the digital sphere, fungibility, fungible tokens are basically all coins that we have, right? So these are all basically tokens. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, these are all represented by tokens, right? And the nature of these tokens are fungible in the sense that each token is worth the exact same as another token. So one XRP coin is worth the same as another XRP coin. One Ethereum is the same as another Ethereum just because you your Ethereum was mined earlier then the Ethereum that you're getting doesn't change the price value of it. And therefore, the um, you know, it's a fungible characteristic. Now, non-fungible means that you can't do that. So non-fungible items are things like cars, um, you know, things like um, shiny Pokemon cards or Pokemon cards themselves, or even say a Charizard, Charizard cards. One Charizard card is isn't exactly equal to another Charizard card because it does depend on when it was created. It depends on the shine. It depends on the quality. Uh, and these things change the fact that you can actually just switch a Charizard with another Charizard. Okay. Um, so non-fungible means that these tokens, um, I think it'll be more clearer if I kind of pull up, let's just uh, pull up the Gods Unchained cards. Um, so for example, these are NFTs, right? An NFT non fungible token, these cards or tokens that represent certain items digitally. Um, but the non fungible aspect of it is that each token is actually unique. You can give a unique characteristic. In this case, uh, each card is different. Um, the NFT itself is non divisible. So in that sense, it's unique because Ethereum, you can buy 0.5 Ethereum, you can buy 0.01 BTC, etc. You can devise um, these tokens, right? But with unique assets or NFTs, you can't do that. NFTs are unique and they're whole. You can only get the whole NFT or you can't. So traditionally, um, or I think the most popular thing to do uh, or to hold your fungible tokens, your cryptocurrencies are on exchanges. And you can see fungible tokens, they kind of have the same value. You can currently see BTC trading at 7,800. If you want to sell your Bitcoin, no one's going to ask you, when did you mine that Bitcoin? You can sell it for this exact price because again, it's fungible. It's able to be traded um, with another, you know, a value that's determined by the market for all Bitcoin coins. So, but with um, NFTs, it's completely different, okay? Each item has its own value and it's not as simple as listing it here for a price and seeing it sell within seconds. Um, understanding what to sell and buy NFTs at requires a lot of understanding of the marketplace or else you're gonna kind of cheat yourself. You know, you're either gonna sell it for really low or, or you're gonna buy it for too expensive because you don't understand the market. And it's not as simple as saying, oh, look, currently Bitcoin's trading at 7,815. Well, that means if I get a Bitcoin at 7,800, it's a good deal, right? It's not as simple as, as that with NFTs. NFTs are predominantly held in your online wallet. So in this case, 
I have a Chrome plugin called MetaMask and MetaMask is an online digital wallet that holds my NFTs. It also holds certain cryptocurrencies and you can see that once I open my wallet, um, it shows that I have 5.98 Ethereum. Um, it also shows that I have, once this lag finishes, it shows that I have, it loads to other tokens. I, I can actually also put in the um, contract address for it to display, you know, how many lands or how many gods on chain cards it has, but I haven't done that. You can see I have 24,068 mana tokens, right? So now what I can do is go to a marketplace like Decentraland. So this is Decentraland land place. And you can see that because I've logged into my online wallet, it picks up that I have 24,000 mana tokens. With these mana tokens, I can buy these NFTs. NFTs, crypto collectibles, uh, non-fungible tokens, ERC721, these are all interchangeable words that mean pretty much the same thing. So when I say the word NFT, I'm referring to these assets that you can buy and sell. So these digital land, you can see people buy these pixels of land which are 16 by 16 meters and people this is a massive map where the big projects going on the crypto valley each one of these pixels is 16 by 16 meters if you go to dcl plaza um the build page you can see a ton of stuff people are building on their land um you know games experiences clubs um all kinds of things right mansions dj areas shops districts it's all pretty cool what people are building on their land so but the ownership of the land requires you to purchase it and own that token so if we visit ethereum uh, etherscan if i type in my wallet address and i kind of search through you can kind of see my transactions but if i click on token you can see that the erc20 tokens um are you know the mana coins you can see other coins over here but if you scroll all the way down to ERC721, which is the Ethereum token standard for NFTs. Um, you can see I have three Decentraland land. I have um, all these bunch of things. I've got 3,896 Decentraland cards. But I have three Decentraland lands, right? That's not as simple as you can't put a value next to it. You can see it gives me an estimate value for ERC20 tokens, but it doesn't do that for NFTs because you can't. You can't do that. Each one's different. It said that I had three Decentraland lands, right? So if I go to the Decentraland marketplace, once again, you can see that I have one, two, three individual Decentraland lands. Dark red means that I've listed it for sale. Okay. These are estates. So joined together land are referred to estates. I have a really big estate over here, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, this one itself isn't a land it's a set of lands that is represented by an estate token so that's a bit different but just to highlight the fact that how it works you can see that etherscan shows that i own those particular tokens three nft tokens and each of those nfts have different values based on where they're located within this world right now other nfts it, it said that i had gods unchained cards i have a ton of cards if i click on my inventory for gods unchained it shows me how many cards I have in the Genesis set 4,600. It shows me how many different types of cards I have. I have one of this in diamond. I have one of it in common. Um, I have nine of these cards in common, one in shadow, one in diamond. Um, I think it'll show me if I click on these, what they look like, maybe not. Um, but yeah, I have, you know, those NFT tokens that you saw in my ether scan represent different items so whether they whether they are land whether they are cards whether they are axie infinity pets you can own these pets and uh, kind of raise them and, and battle them like pokemon and other things but nfts are going to be a big thing because they represent 100 percent ownership of digital assets and the coolest thing for me as someone interested in finance and business is the fact that you can grow make a living from this sell buy marketplace that open where you can literally just list within seconds um, your item and someone across the world that you don't know of can um, participate in this online digital economy purchase your land or item for more than you bought it 
So the world, the marketplace is open to the world with the internet. Things are, uh, assets are able to be transferred within seconds um, amongst two people. And you don't even have to know that person. It can be done trustless and immediate 100% ownership. It is so damn cool. Um, it was cool when Bitcoin got famous. It's even cooler personally for me with NFTs because, you know, one NFT that you own, for example, um, let's go to uh, Gods Unchained. These this card here is these two cards are diamond legendaries. They're quite rare to get. There's only like three or five of it of diamond types of each legendary available. So I think um, this is like one of five of something or something, right? I purchased these for 7.5 Ethereum each um, about seven or eight days ago. I think now I could probably sell it for about 9.5 Ethereum just because um, one, the market's kind of gone up a little bit, but even when I bought it at 7.5, I could have probably sold it immediately at 7.9, right? 0.4 Ethereum profit, just because I negotiated the buy price um, down before I purchased it, I bought two for 15. But again, there's that ability to negotiate, buy and sell for profit, which is amazing with NFTs. So in the future, in this tutorial series, I'm gonna be going through a lot of this um, how this is done, how to get started, how to set up, set yourself up, how to spot opportunity and everything in between. But for this video alone, I wanted to go through what an NFT actually is, the basics, the technicals, just so you understand how it all works. Um, but that, that's it for this video. I um, hope you guys find a lot of value in this series.